But we begin this report with the scene from the federal courthouse behind me here in Miami, where earlier today, former President Trump pleaded not guilty to the 37 criminal counts against him. Trump was arraigned for the second time in his life, but the first in a federal case. The indictment is the Department of Justice Special Counsel Jack Smith accusing the former president of knowingly retaining and concealing classified documents. He is now heading back to Bedminster, New Jersey, where he is expected to speak in a little over an hour. CBS News chief elections and campaign correspondent Bob Costa has more. Former President Donald Trump made his way to the arraignment this afternoon, waving to the supporters who lined the route and passing a spectacle of onlookers, protesters and police gathered outside the Miami federal courthouse. Once inside, the former president, along with aide Walt Nauta, who was also charged in the case, surrendered to authorities, got swabbed for DNA and were fingerprinted. There was no mugshot taken and Trump was allowed to hold on to his passport. During the court proceeding, closed to the camera, Trump was expressionless, his hands folded, as his lawyer entered a plea of not guilty to all 37 charges. The former president emerged defiant, making a stop at a Cuban restaurant where supporters were waiting. I think it's going great. I think it's a rigged deal here. We have a rigged country. We have a country that's corrupt. We but Trump now faces serious charges, including illegally hoarding classified documents at his Florida estate that could lead to two decades in prison. According to the indictment, the highly sensitive materials, which included information about the U.S. nuclear program and the military activities of adversaries, were found throughout Mar-a-Lago, in a bathroom, in the lake room, in the white and gold ballroom, and in a storage area, all sitting unsecured while the club held more than 100 social events with outside guests. Trump remains the clear front runner for the Republican nomination, and many of his rivals have sided with the former president in blaming what he calls a politicized Department of Justice. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie said his fellow candidates are missing the point. And we're in a situation where there are people in my own party who are blaming DOJ. How about blame him? He did it. Former House Speaker Paul Ryan said Republicans will suffer if they stick with Trump. I'm not a Trump fan. Uh, I want to win. And if we nominate Trump, we're going to lose. Uh, he hasn't won anything since 2016. I think we want a nominee who's not weighed down with so much baggage in order to win this election. And it's really clear a lot of our suburban voters will not vote for Donald Trump. And Bob Costa joins me now in this balmy Miami. So, Bob, um, a week is a lifetime in politics. We know that. But you've been reporting that basically the other Republican candidates are waiting for another shoe to drop with Donald Trump. But what happens if this shoe, the shoe in Fulton County and the next one on January 6th investigation, what if those shoes just make the electorate in the Republican Party gather around him more tightly? To carry on this, uh, this <laughs> analogy, I would say there are two different tiers of shoe watchers yeah. or shoe throwers. They're looking at this, if you're on the lower tier in terms of polling and fundraising, and you're saying, I gotta take this shoe and I gotta throw it. I gotta take my shot. Christie, former Vice President Mike Pence, questioning Trump's respect for the rule of law, the Constitution. They're seeing a bit of a crack here when it comes to a political opening. What I'm closely watching is when does Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, if ever, really start to take on Trump because he senses a soft underbelly politically. When you hear former President Trump talk about this, he says, as he's done so often, he turns attacks on him into an attack on his audience. That sense of grievance fits really nicely with what he is so patterned with saying to the electorate. Is there any message better than grievance for the Republican electorate as it stands right now? For the Republican electorate. Right. So when I'm talking to sources close to Trump, they say right now this is helpful. It could maybe even consolidate his support across the party. They say we share his grievances. But in a general election, there's still a view going back to 2016 in the Trump circle that he won not because he was Donald Trump. He won because he was running against Secretary Clinton. And the more they can start trying to focus on President Biden, should they become the presumptive nominee as a campaign next year, the better for them they see politically. But for now, they'll take this attention. Bob Costa. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. And Donald Trump's uh, today in court, his court appearance, it marked the first time a former president faces a federal arraignment. Catherine Herridge spoke with one of Donald Trump's lawyers about the specific issues they're attempting to hurdle in that case. And here's a package now from Catherine. 
This historic prosecution of a former president presents unique legal arguments and challenges. While special counsel Jack Smith has a recording where Trump allegedly admits keeping a classified Pentagon memo on Iran, Trump's legal team insists he had broad powers to declassify and keep sensitive records like that one. Remember, President Trump was the president. He could declassify documents under the Presidential Records Act. But the National Archives disputes that, saying all records must be returned at the end of an administration. Alina Haba, a Trump lawyer and spokesperson, told CBS News the legal team may move quickly to dismiss the case, citing alleged prosecutorial misconduct. And they are ready to fight each of the 37 criminal counts. These are bogus charges made by a politically motivated special prosecutor. Does the former president understand the serious nature of these criminal charges? Of course. Calling the indictment a one-sided story, Trump lawyers are also expected to demand notes from former Trump attorney Evan Corcoran be thrown out of the case. Corcoran's personal notes quote Trump asking, what happens if we don't respond at all or don't play ball with them? That was in response to the government's subpoena demanding the documents be returned. I think that the testimony of Evan Corcoran is something that will be suppressed. For special counsel Jack Smith, he'll be dealing with a jury made up of Florida residents, a state Trump won in 2016 and 2020. And the heart of the case, the retention of classified documents will create obstacles for prosecutors. The government really has to uh, develop a strategy to use the classified documents without making them public. The judge overseeing the case could also present hurdles. Eileen Cannon, a Trump appointee, slowed the FBI's investigation into the documents last summer. Smith will also likely have to deal with repeated attacks from Donald Trump. Deranged Jack Smith, and he's a big Trump hater. And Catherine Herridge joins me now. Catherine, there was something intriguing in the, in the activity today uh, that you picked up on, the idea that there may be more witnesses out there than, uh, than we've thought about in terms of the universe of witnesses from what we've seen inside this indictment. Well, that's right, John. Uh, in the arraignment today, they have what's called a discussion about conditions. And in this case, the prosecution and defense, there was an agreement that there would be no travel restrictions for former President Trump. And then the judge said, I have a condition. And the condition is that Donald Trump cannot talk to some of the witnesses. And the Justice Department is going to put forward a list. Then the defense is going to weigh in on the list. And the judge will have the final say. But what that tells me on my two decades of experience is that there are, in fact, significant witnesses out there and evidence that we simply don't know about, that we have not read in this lengthy indictment, John. Now, one witness, or at least testimony, that they do know about and that they're worried about, that, as uh, the Trump lawyer told you, is they think that they're going to knock out this testimony from President Trump's former lawyer, Evan Corcoran. Why do they think they can do that? You know, the simple answer, John, is not a legal answer. It just all comes down to geography. Now that the charges have been brought here in Florida, it's like wiping the slate clean. Just because this judge in Washington, D.C., agreed that they thought there was a crime committed here in these conversations with the former president and his lawyer, Evan Corcoran, and that the notes, which is extraordinary and unusual, the notes would get into evidence, Judge here could say, you know what, I've looked at this. I don't agree. We're knocking those notes out of the box. So it all comes down to this question of geography. And as you know, they had to bring the case here because the alleged crimes were committed at Mar-a-Lago, not in Washington, D.C., where the special prosecutor would have a more favorable jury pool, John. Catherine Herridge. Thanks a million, Catherine. And now I am joined by Ed O'Keefe from Washington, D.C. Uh, Ed, I'm kind of envious of the um, studio you're in, but um, <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this question. <laughs> Many of uh, President Trump's ally, uh, excuse me, his opponents rushed to his defense was when he was indicted in Manhattan uh, back in April. They called it a politically motivated move. Now, a lot of the party has done that, but there have been some fibrillations since in this last indictment. How do you read 
the different kinds of reactions. I, I, well, first of all, I'm glad you've shed to the, just the shirt sleeves because uh, it, it looks awfully hot down there. But um, good to be with you. Look, the, I, I think what was the difference here, of course, is national security. I was most struck by what Nikki Haley, one of his opponents, said on Monday, pointing out that her own husband is deploying with the South Carolina National Guard to Africa in the coming days and pointing out that much of the information he was allegedly holding at Mar-a-Lago is the kind of information that could put troops like her husband at risk. That seems to be a pretty basic argument against his behavior here, and one that she's now wagering probably resonates with a lot of military veterans uh, and others who are concerned about national security and traditionally vote Republican. We have, of course, Chris Christie and Asa Hutchinson, these other contenders out there who are totally about uh, making sure that he doesn't uh, win the nomination again, but the wavering we're now seeing among Haley, Tim Scott, a few others who maybe still have issues with the process and the prosecutors, but acknowledge that the content of the allegations is serious is something different. And I think we'll, we may see more of it from, from some of the others, just given the fact that this has earned such widespread attention and, uh, and the charges are so serious. So we, what we hear from uh, a number of Republicans rushing to the president's, de, former president's defense is, what about the Bidens? Well, Joe Biden, that's easy. There's a special counsel looking into the classified documents he has. Is there any update on that? And then Hunter Biden uh, is obviously a, a, a great concern to many Republicans. What's the nature or status of the, the House investigation and, the, and the, the other investigations into Hunter Biden? Sure, and they are separate matters, even though Republicans like to talk about them as if they're one big one regarding the family. There's the classified document situation with the president and the documents that were found at his Wilmington home and at his office here in Washington. That investigation continues. No update on when we might learn more. The White House uh, obviously prepared to address it when and if it comes, but they have no update, they told me today, on the timeline there. The Hunter Biden situation is regarding his own uh, issued failing to pay taxes, a potential gun possession charge. It's been investigated by a Trump-appointed federal prosecutor for Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, that investigation also uh, is believed to be continuing, but every so often we get rumblings that there may be some kind of resolution coming. We'll see. But both of those remain out there as potential political and legal issues, both for the president and for his son. Republicans will see them as one and the same. They are, however, very different legal matters. Indeed. Ed O'Keefe from Washington. Thanks a lot, Ed.